Right, hello guys, DJ Backpress here, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be reacting to my 2018 World Cup predictions that I made at the start of the World Cup 2018 tournament in Russia. And yes, I know that it's been a little while, ladies and gentlemen. I know that it's been around three weeks since the World Cup has concluded, and it has taken me around three weeks just to get around to making this video. And the reason why I need to do it now is because the Premier League returns next week, and before I begin my Premier League content, I need to conclude my World Cup content. So this is the penultimate World Cup video that I will be doing. There will be one final World Cup video coming out in kind of the next coming days and hopefully I'll get around to doing that you know at the intended time when I say I'm going to do it. But uh, today we're going to be looking back at my predictions and I made several predictions. So I predicted which 16 teams I thought were going to get into the knockout stages of the World Cup tournament out of all of the groups and all of the group stages games. I made my predictions of which 16 teams I believe were going to go into the knockout stages and then I made predictions on who I thought was ultimately going to finish in third place, which team was ultimately going to finish in second place, and ultimately which team was going to win the World Cup in Russia this year. And also I made predictions as to who I thought was going to get the top goal scorer, who was going to be the best player, who was going to be, and the team that was going to be the most surprised package, and just also where I thought England were going to finish. And I made all of those predictions and we're going to be reacting to all of these predictions in this video and this is the video that you're watching right now and I wanted to do this kind of in a, a very special way this video was going to be edited I was going to get all the graphics up I was going to actually get the original footage and put it into this video but like I said you know if I had to do all of that then it'd be the next World Cup <laughs> basically I just don't have the time to edit this video so just like my you know World Cup predictions which was purely unedited this video is also going to be purely unedited and you know if any of you skeptics out there that don't believe if you think that some of these predictions I literally just made on the spot today, then I'll put the link down to the, my original World Cup 2018 predictions that will be down in the description below. So, you know, go over and watch that first. I strongly advise you to go and watch that before you watch this video. If not, just take my word for it. Or, you know, just again, just go to the bits in that video as well. I'm, I'm just not lying, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, take that what you will. Uh, but I'm certainly not lying. So let's jump into this. And uh, we are going to firstly look at uh, which 16 teams I thought was going to get into the knockout stage of the World Cup. So let's start in Group A. And I've also given myself 16 points. So 16 points are on offer. So out of the 16 teams, how many teams did I correctly predict to reach the knockout stages of the World Cup. So let's start with Group A now. In Group A, we have um, Egypt, Russia, Saudi Arabia and Uruguay. And I predicted that Egypt and Uruguay were going to get out of Group A. And actually, it was Uruguay and Russia who got out of Group A. Saudi Arabia and Egypt didn't qualify. So we got a point. So we've got one point on the board. And, um, you know, Uruguay was kind of a given, really. They've got Suarez, you know, they've got the likes of, you know, a strong partnership, you know, they, they originally had, um, you know, uh, they had Godin, and who was the other centre back that they had, like Jimenez or, or, or something like that, they've got a pretty decent side, they've also got, you know, Cavani, Cavani and Suarez, you know, they've got a very, very lethal, you know, attacking force, and, you know, that was kind of an easy kind of prediction, and Egypt was, you know, purely because of Mohamed Salah, you know, you know Mohamed Salah's come out and, you know, off the back from a season, and basically he's had the season of his life at Liverpool, and I thought he was going to take that momentum, take that success, and take that glory into the World Cup and he kind of floundered really he didn't really you know set Egypt alight and I thought he was going to single-handedly take Egypt into the knockout stages and he just just didn't really do that so um, you know Egypt went out Russia who were the hosts I mean they started off the campaign very very well and you know actually they put in a very very good shift and I was actually you know I underestimated them even though they were the host of the tournament I just didn't think that they were going to do anything of you know you know significant nature and you know they did very very well and they joined Uruguay and getting out of group A so we got one out of two correct on that. So and uh, now moving on to Group B. So in Group B we had Iran, Morocco, Portugal and Spain and I predicted Portugal and Spain to go into the knockout stages. And lo and behold, Portugal and Spain got into the knockout stages. Iran and Morocco went home and we got two out of two correct. I mean... You know, again, a very, very easy prediction. You know, Spain have got the likes of, you know, Diego Costa. They've got Morata. They've got a very, very strong, you know, side. Not as strong as what the Spain side once was. The side that ultimately won the 2010 World Cup. 
but they have got some amazing players and you know they were they were as strong and as solid as you like um, you know it didn't work out for them in the knockout stages but you know they have got a very very strong side and Portugal obviously have got Cristiano Ronaldo and you know Cristiano Ronaldo alone you know he can you know put you in and take you into the next steps however I don't think he was as good I mean he had a very very good game against um, Spain, where he scored that ridiculous hat trick in that free for extraordinary game, um, but I just don't think he really hit the heights. And you know, Portugal and also you know we're going on to Argentina, but both of them went out at the same you know kind of time. And, and really, Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, I think people are now just expecting a bit too much from him, and you know he can only do so much really. But um, you know, in terms of getting out of that group, it was it was kind of a given really that Portugal and Spain were going to get out of that group, and they did. So that is two out of two. And then moving on to Group C, we have Australia, Denmark, France, and Peru. And I predicted Denmark and France to go into the knockout stages of the World Cup. And lo and behold, France and Denmark got out of the group. So we have now got two out of two. So that is five out of six points that we have accumulated so far. France, again, are a given, really. They've got an absolutely phenomenal side. We'll come on to France um, later on in this video. But, um, you know, I think many people thought they were going to get out of the group, and they did. Um, Denmark, I, I've kind of... It, I, it was a toss-up, really, between Denmark and Australia, really. Um, I didn't think Peru were going to do anything of, you know, great nature. But, you know, Denmark kind of ju just about got there. Again, I didn't really watch too much of them. And, you know, I don't really know a lot about, you know, the players that they've got at their disposal. But I know that they've got a couple of really good, you know, kind of key players, really. So, you know, in the end, they got the better of Australia and also Peru and joined France in the knockout stages. So that is Group C. So, so far, so good. In Group D, we have Argentina, Croatia, Iceland and Nigeria. And I predicted Argentina and Iceland to go into the knockout stages. Now, I got uh, one out of two correct. Argentina did go into the knockout stages, but it was Croatia who got into the knockout stages. And looking back, that, I mean, how far Croatia went... Yeah, that's not entirely great, actually. But, um, you know, Argentina, first and foremost, you know, very similar to Portugal. They've got Lionel Messi. They've also got, you know, Higuain. They've got Aguero. They've got a very, very strong and solid, you know, you know, attacking line. They've got, you know, decent defenders as well. They've got a, you know, a decent goalkeeper. Um, I put Iceland in that bracket purely because of what they did in Euro 2016, how they kind of embarrassed and humiliated England. And I thought they were going to be, like the surprise package and, and kind of do what they did originally and do that all over again and they just they didn't really. Um, I didn't really expect too much of Croatia and looking back, you know, how naive of me, you know, was that? Because, you know, they've got, you know, Modric, they've got Rakitic, they've got Perisic, they've got a very, very good side and, you know, we saw just how good and just how well Croatia played and I underestimated them. You know, I didn't even think they were going to get out of the group, let alone, you know, predict and think that they were going to get that far and they did very, very, very well. So, we'll come on to exactly why Croatia did so well but, um, yeah, yeah, that was uh, one of those. It was one of those kind of predictions where I just overlooked Croatia, and yeah, it just wasn't really a, a good prediction. But we got one out of two there, and uh, now moving on to Group E, we have Brazil, Costa Rica, Serbia, and Switzerland. And I predicted Brazil and Costa Rica to go through, and it was Brazil and Switzerland who went through. So yet again, we only get a point. Now again, Brazil, you know, had a point to prove after their kind of embarrassing semi-final in the World Cup, you know, and they were hosting the World Cup four years ago. They got all the way to the semi-finals and they just got absolutely ripped apart um, by a Germany side. So they had a lot to prove. Obviously, you know, with Neymar, Coutinho, you know, uh, you know, Gabriel Jesus, you know, up top, you know, they've added, you know, a world-class goalkeeper to the ranks in Edison. And, you know, Brazil had a, a fairly decent World Cup. You know, they did well in the group stages. Um, they left it late in some of their group games. They certainly weren't perfect. And I thought Costa Rica were going to do something very similar to what they did four years ago. And that Costa Rica fairy tale that uh, we saw in Brazil, I thought, was going to be kind of seen again in, in Russia. And it just it, it didn't happen. Again, Switzerland actually did rather well. Um, and, again, they were a surprise package. I don't think many people would have predicted them to get through. I know they've got a couple of decent players, but, again, you would 
wouldn't have really expected them to, to do anything of great nature and uh, they certainly did so again you know an easy prediction in Brazil getting into the knockout stages of the World Cup Costa Rica uh, kind of unperformed and Switzerland got there in the end in Group F we have Germany Sweden Mexico and South Korea and I predicted Germany and Sweden to get through and uh, Sweden got through but Germany didn't. Mexico went into the knockout stages and unbelievable. I mean, this was the story. I mean, there was many stories in this World Cup tournament, but, you know, Germany was one of the biggest ones. Germany World Cup winners four years ago and, you know, they still got kind of a, a fairly fresh, decent squad. It isn't, you know, four years ago that Germany, you know, side were, were kind of at their peak and they are starting to just decline. But, um, what an absolute abomination and, you know, an abolished end to what was an absolutely ridiculous World Cup tournament from Germany and ridiculous in a very negative way. I mean, they finished rock bottom of the group. They lost 2-0 to South Korea and they just they just underperformed. You know, Ozil um, didn't really do much and all of the controversy that surrounded him as Ozil means that he will never ever kick a ball in, 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 a, in a German shirt again. He'll still be playing for England, but he will never ever be kicking a ball in a German shirt ever again. And, you know, nobody saw that coming really. But then in hindsight, anyone and every team that has ever won the World Cup in the next, you know, World Cup that has commenced after their World Cup winnings, they have never ever done well. You know, Spain, won the 2010 World Cup, they got knocked out of the group stage in the 2014 World Cup, Germany won the 2014 World Cup and they got knocked out of the 2018 World Cup. Nobody really expected that. I think um, Mexico did absolutely brilliantly. You know, again, nobody expected them to really do anything. And this was the World Cup where teams were just stepping up to the plate and they were really, you know, standing their ground and they were really causing teams problems. I mean, South Korea blitzed Germany, even though they went home. You know, Mexico did absolutely brilliantly, and, and you know, also Sweden were were strong. They were solid. They were compact, um, and they were nasty. And you know, they got the results that way. Even though it didn't quite work out in the knockout stages, they did very, very, very well. I need some water. When you do it unedited, right? You just lose the you know ability to speak for a long period. I'll be talking literally all day. I just you know, I just can't stop speaking. Oh, that's better. Right, so now let's move on to Group G. And uh, this was a group that consisted of Belgium, England, Panama and Tunisia. We know this group very well, don't we, ladies and gentlemen? And uh, we got two out of two correct because we successfully predicted that Belgium and England were going to go through. And again, very, very easy. There was a, a slight feeling of, you know, hesitancy because... You can never predict what England are going to do. And under Gareth Southgate, nobody knew. And nobody quite knew exactly what England were going to do. And where they ultimately finished, nobody ever thought in a million, you know, trillion years that England were going to do that well. Certainly, you know, I was confident we were going to get out of the group. Whether we could have, you know, got into the latter stages of the competition, you know, was another thing. And we certainly did that. However, you know... It was one of those groups where I knew we were going to get wins, or I believed that we were going to get wins against Panama and Tunisia. Whether we could beat Belgium, and ultimately we didn't, but in actual hindsight, you know, finishing in second actually gave us a slightly, you know, straightforward kind of, you know, opposition kind of sides that we face in the round of 16 and then in the quarterfinals, even though our luck ran out in the semi-finals. But, um, you know, we did lose to Belgium. Belgium finished in first. England finished in second. Panama and Tunisia didn't really do anything. And, you know, England got a, a very, very comprehensive win against Panama, a very late win over Tunisia. They rested a completely, you know, second team side because they knew the the kind of qualification was already in the bag. And actually, they probably wanted to finish in second. Belgium got a narrow win and, you know, England got to the semi-finals. Belgium also got to the semi-finals. But um, in the end, both those sides put their place into the knockout stage and we got two points there. And finally, we've got Group H and we've got Colombia, Japan, Poland and Senegal. And I predicted Colombia, uh, Colombia, Colombia, let's try that again, shall we? Well, I predicted Colombia and Poland to go through and Colombia did go through, but Japan uh, did also go through. I predicted Poland, so Japan went through and Colombia went through, but um, it was Poland who went out. And actually, Poland really disappointed me. They didn't really offer anything, and you know, with with Lewandowski in the wings, 
you know, and, you know, they've got some great players, you know, individual players that can step up and rise up and really cause problems, but um, they didn't really do anything of great nature. They finished rock bottom. Um, really, really impressed with Japan. Another surprise package, a team that nobody expected to do any kind of, you know, something or, or do anything of any kind that was any kind of positive, and they did that, and they did that very, very well. So, you know, credit to Japan. Colombia also, you know, Hamas or Dritty guess kind of, you know, w w was kind of dented by injury, but um, I think also he did very, very well when he did feature and you know Colombia you know as a whole did very very well in the group stages even though they got knocked out by England on penalties you know they caused teams problems and you know they they they're rising you know they got to a quarter final of the World Cup in 2014 they've got to a round of 60 in 2018 and uh, they're motoring they're certainly a team that is certainly on the rise so those are the 16 teams that I thought we're going to get through that was Egypt Uruguay Portugal, Spain, Denmark, France, Argentina, Iceland, Brazil, Costa Rica, Germany, Sweden, Belgium, England, and Colombia and Poland. And the teams that actually got through was Uruguay, Russia, Spain, Portugal, France, Denmark, Croatia, Argentina, Brazil, Switzerland, Sweden, Mexico, Belgium, England, and Colombia, Japan. And out of 16 points, the so 16 points were on offer, and I got 11 out of 16. So I got five teams incorrect out of 16 teams predicted, 11 correctly predicted, five incorrect. And I think that's actually not too bad. I mean, it's really, really hard to make predictions on the group stages because on any given game, any team can beat anyone. So, you know, it, it's it's a roll of a dice, really. Anything can happen, anything does happen. So, you know, I'm happy with that. And I think I said um, Dame instead of Day. I'm just, oh, dearie me. Right, we're almost there. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. But, um, yeah, it, it, it was one of those kind of, you know, odd performances. And, you know, many performances the World Cup had excitement, intrigue. You know, there was so much and there was so many kind of, you know, amazing stories and so many, you know, amazing headlines that were written that ultimately, um, you know, you can't really make predictions because anything can happen and anything does happen. But, you know, I'm happy with that. 11 out of 16, you know, well over 50%. We're looking at around 75, you know, a percentage score of 75%. I'll take that. I'll happily take that. So let's move on now to my World Cup predictions and go on to the final set of predictions that I made. So let's start with the team that I thought was going to successfully finish in third place. I didn't make um, any predictions for the knockout stages because that just gets a little bit too far and there's just so many that we need to do. So... I predicted which team I thought was going to finish in third place, which team was going to finish in second place, and then the ultimate World Cup champions of the Russia campaign 2018. So in third place, I correctly, and I'm actually happy because I got this absolutely spot on, I said Belgium were going to finish in third place, and they did. Whew, right. So it's getting so hot in this room, it is beyond me. Again, this is the beauty of doing it unedited. So... Belgium finishing in third, right from the start of the 2018 World Cup, even before it began, I thought this Belgium side are going to go a long way. You know, just look at, you know, the, the, the evidence and the stats kind of speak for themselves. Lukaku, De Bruyne, Hazard, you know, Thibaut Courtois in goal, you know, Vertonghen, Alderweireld, you know, in the midfield of, you know, they've, they've got so many, you know, great plays, you know. I think what let Belgium down is that they've got a sensational attack, a world-class goalkeeper and a really solid and stable defence. But in midfield, they were missing like that Kante, that, that kind of anchor player that can sit there and actually do a job. And they, they, they were just missing that. You know, I think Fellaini let them down. I think, um, you know, I think Chadley actually had a very, very good World Cup. But they were missing that anchor. At times, Fellaini just, you know, fell flat. And in that semi-final encounter against France, they just were slightly missing just something. And it was something ever so slightly, you know, something that they were missing that allowed France to get that goal. And they just, they couldn't push on. But, you know, they, they demolished some teams. You know, I looked at what they did against Panama. You know, they, they beat um, Brazil very, very comfortably and very, very comfortably. Um, they almost fell to a shocking Japan defeat, but they kind of got a goal in the very last minute. So Roberto Martinez's side showed power, it showed presence, it showed authority, you know, it showed desire, it showed experience, and, you know, it was mature. It was a very, very mature side. It just lacked that special, even though it had De Bruyne who could create so much, it, it lacked kind of that amazing defensive player. And I think they're, they're one player away from really, you know, cementing themselves. And they are going to be right up there, you know, for Euro 2020 and the World Cup 2022. They are going to be right up there, like one of the favourites to win the World Cup. You know, that they are 
they're another team that are, they're motoring, they're moving up the pedestal and they're getting better and better and better. And third place is a very, very respectful finish. Um, they comprehensively beat England in the third place playoff when kind of England has sort of given up on the World Cup, really, let's be fair. But third place, very, very commendable, very, very good. And I'm very, very happy that I got that spot on because, you know, I just said right from day one, Belgium will finish in third place. Um, in second place then, um, and this I got absolutely, you know, shot to pieces and I thought Germany were going to finish in second place. And, you know, I think many people also had that same idea, you know. I remember stating and saying in my World Cup 2018 prediction video that I thought Germany were going to get to the final and lose in the final because I just thought even though their side is still in kind of a, a, a peak moment, um, they are starting to begin that decline and, and there is another team that is just far superior to them. And I just thought that, you know, that superior team were going to, you know, stamp their authority. But, you know, Germany didn't even get to a knockout game you know they weren't even warranted a place in that world cup final because they didn't even get out of the group so a huge disappointment from Joachim Lowe from all of those German players and nobody would have you know if, if I had sat you down in the pub with a pint and said that Germany are not even going to get out of the group people would have said what the fuck are you on about you haven't got any football knowledge of any kind you know nobody ever thought that that was ever going to happen um, so I did get that wrong completely completely wrong um, and yeah that was just an awful awful prediction in hindsight but then in hindsight as well it wasn't really because it was just a rational and quite sensible kind of prediction to make when you look at what Germany did four years ago um, and then we move on to the side that I thought was going to win the World Cup and I got this one spot on I maintain from day one France were going to win the World Cup and boy oh boy France won the World Cup. I mean again the stats kind of speak for themselves you know when you look at that France side can you really see and are you really surprised that they won the World Cup you know Kante, Pogba, they've got Griezmann, Mbappe stole the show he was electric um, they've got a world-class goalkeeper in Lloris. They've got great, you know, centre-backs. They've got, you know, Matuidi. They've got, you know, they've got so many great... And every single player in that French side did the business and did their job and did so, so, so well. Um, and in the end, I'm very, very happy um, with making that prediction. Um, and now we move on. And, and, you know, if you want to hear my further thoughts in regards to France winning the World Cup, then just go back and watch my you know uh, final uh, World Cup 2018 final review because I, I said it all in that video. It's all there for you guys. Um, and also, I'm not going to spend too long on this because I said England would get knocked out of the quarterfinals. They actually got through to the semi-finals. And, you know, again, the, the England you know story speaks for itself. It was absolutely amazing. And what England did and what Gareth Southgate did with that England side, he made the whole country get behind him and believe. And that is the greatest gift you can ever give. So, you know, credit to Gareth Southgate on that one. Um, we got to, to the semi-finals. We exceeded all expectation. We just couldn't get to the final. And um, hopefully in two years' time, we'll go that extra distance and actually book ourselves a place in that final. Although I don't think we're quite there yet. We need to work on a couple of key areas and... This England side is rising, it's got potential and it's motoring. So hopefully, you know, in two, you know, two to four years' time, England will be the real deal. But we're certainly under Gareth Southgate heading in that right direction. Um, the surprise team I said was Costa Rica, and it actually turned out to be Croatia. I've chosen Croatia um, purely and simply because of the fact of getting to a final. Nobody expected them to do so, even though they've got amazing players, they kind of sneaked in under the radar. And, you know, even though they lost in the final 4 2 to France, it was a final that could have been very, very different. Very much like Liverpool's Champions League final. Had that first half gone in a different way and gone in Croatia's favour, it would have been a very, very different World Cup final. In the second half, France absolutely smashed it. But, um, you know, Croatia did very, very, very well. And to be runners up in a World Cup tournament is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And the top goal scorer I said was going to be Kevin De Bruyne of Belgium, and it turned out to be our England young breed and young born Harry Kane getting the golden boot. I didn't make predictions for the goalkeepers and also, you know, the, the golden ball and all that malarkey because, you know, I just didn't really realise that was there, <laughs> incidentally. But uh, those are all my World Cup predictions. I've reacted to all of them. So I have really hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down in the comment section below. And also let me know who you thought was going to win the World Cup, who you thought was going to get out of the group stages of the World Cup tournament and all of that. And give me all of your thoughts, feelings and uh, general kind of thoughts, feelings down in the comment section below. Or you can tweet me at djbappers1998. Um, there will be one more. There will be one final World Cup video, which is going to be almost like a montage. And I'll give my final thoughts and feelings to the general world. 
World Cup tournament. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please make sure to leave a like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new around here and check out my great content as well. I do apologise that this was unedited. I really wanted to make this video better, but I just haven't got the time to do it. So this is kind of the next best thing. And if you have enjoyed it, please show your appreciate to it. It really does mean the absolute world to me. Until next time, this is DJ signing out. Take care, and I shall speak to you all later. Take care, and I shall speak to you all very, very, very soon. Peace out.